Yes, I, on that note, uh, he, I watched uh, Vendetta. The, oh, yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of underscoring. Yeah. Under, uh, because they talk all the time. Yes. They never stop talking. But I, it struck me that uh, it's, it's um, almost overpowering underscoring what you did. Really? Uh, not to the extent that you don't understand the words, mm -hmm. but it's, it's very... It always tries to... Mm. There's sort of an energy trying to come up way beyond what you would see in a mm. 1940s Hollywood film, for example. Well, I don't know, maybe that is a problem for some viewers. Uh, the, um, I remember at the time I was uh, um, asking and, and begging the director to use less music, and I, I felt that he wanted too much music mm. everywhere. And my personal taste is for little music, but uh, um, quite forward when there is, so that the music is there because it's actually doing something very specific. I don't, uh, I don't love very much uh, background music uh, and, and you know, in, you call it wallpaper. Um, I, I prefer not to have to write it, but uh, um, equally I can, I can express my point of view a number of times, but if the director is uh, determined to have music throughout, then I, I will write it. Uh, in Atonement, which I very much like, both as a film and what you did musically to it, uh, I, I think that's very accomplished. Uh, you 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 work with one theme basically, and use lots of variations in terms of orchestration or mm -hmm. how you deal with the motifs mm -hmm. and so on, um, and that's. That's one approach I noticed in, mm -hmm. in, in um, um, in terms of most of your music is tonal, harmonic ton, mm -hmm. uh, using harmonic tonality. Mm -hmm. Some composers say uh, this is the past, mm -hmm. uh, but you seem to still see freshness in it and usefulness in it. Can you maybe explain this? Um, yeah. I mean, it's interesting when you said when you said before about uh, you th you feel that a lot of uh, film music is pastiche, um, and I I think I have a, a slightly different view on that. That um, that uh, uh, as I was saying before, the the composer, if he wants to be a character in the movie, he also has to wear a costume like all the other actors. Um, but that doesn't mean that the acting is hammy. You can still be a good actor even when you wear a costume and you can still be yourself and, uh, and have a very deep connection mm -hmm. with, the, with the material. Um, I think you're right that uh, most film music relies on a language that borrows from the past and is a tonal language, is a melodic language very often. Um, it would... Um, I. Uh, I have this difference very clear in my mind when I write concert music and uh, I, I didn't write a violin concerto that sounds like the music for atonement. I, I have a different... Uh, I, I feel like I can uh, um, dispense with the costume when I write my concert mm -hmm. music. Um, but I, I still think that writing film music using a language that can be borrowed from uh, other times in in history doesn't immediately mean that you're writing pastiche. Mm. Quite. Uh, briefly remaining with atonement, there's this famous sampling of the typewriter mm -hmm. and mixing composed music with sampling. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your view on this? Uh, do you do you talk to sound designers as well mm. when, or is that a completely separate yes. field? It, it is a completely separate field but uh, sometimes it happens that we talk and uh, everybody, the director is usually very happy when I talk to the, uh, the sound department uh, and, and it's usually because there is a very specific issue that needs to be dealt with. Um, and it, it goes both ways. I mean, the, very often I write music that incorporates sounds that are not orchestral or made by instruments, and the case of the typewriter is one. Um, but 
but it happened some uh, the, the last animated movie I did there were some situations where um, some of the music was produced by breaking um, light bulbs with a frying pan and then banging on some of that I had to talk to the sound department because I wanted to use those sounds in a musical way and so I ended up asking them to give me the sounds that they had recorded and then I could put them in my musical piece and, and they became part of the music and, and it's, uh, it's an, interesting, um, an interesting thing that happens uh, it goes the other way around sometimes the sound department is put in as a bed of Atmos is called something that has a precise pitch a, a tone and that kind of affects immediately what I do if I if I want to move away from that note and mm -hmm. and so sometimes I get in touch with them and I say can you do something that hasn't got one particular pitch because it it's really holding my music in a place where I don't want to be held and there is this kind of conversation going on and specifically about atonement who, who came up with this idea of using the uh, well that it initially was uh, um, Joe the director who knew how the film would start with the girl typing and then he would he knew that there was a piece of music there and so he said to me do you think you can do something with no noise of the typewriter and he, at that point it was almost like a, a dare you know what do you dare uh, to do with that and uh, and it started from there it kind of developed for me uh, that uh, things like that uh, using sound sounds from the location mm -hmm. uh, from the drama itself connects really the music into the film sometimes the, I mean there's this joke about the, the, the big symphony orchestra in the in the desert uh, mm. where is it yes <laughs> so uh, um. No, of course. To integrate uh, all the means of expression into one powerful... Yeah. It's an interesting thing to explore. Uh, you, I think it's... There are lots of possibilities in a film like Atonement that deals with layers of truth. It's particularly um, interesting and possible to explore um, what the characters can hear and what the audience can hear and what both can hear. Mm. Um, sometimes it becomes a little um, forced mm. to try to find those kind of occasions to break that boundary there is between the audience and what they hear and the characters mm. and what they are able to hear but it's always interesting and and um, and I think you're you're right uh, in uh, in relation to what I try to do um, I always try to find it, it as strong a connection as I can find between the music and the story. So if there is a sound from inside the story that I can use, that immediately is very interesting to me. In, in Atonement there were many other examples of that kind of blurring. There was the thing that you referred to before, for example, at some point I gave it to, um, there was a soldier playing on harmonica and you, you hear Sometimes it's this harmonica playing, and it's it's a theme. It's the main theme from the movie, uh, and so you, sometimes you don't quite know what what's it doing there, uh, and and then it's in the score as well. Or uh, um, there, there is the the scene on the beach where there's the choir singing on the beach, and the music mm. kind of wraps around it. Um, there are all ways for me to connect the music as much as I can to that particular film and not make it generic mm. so you couldn't pull it out of that film and put it in another film and expect mm. that it still works or, or I think it was in a moment where two kinds of music played uh, on screen one and uh, some kind of music and then off screen you yes so that happens sort of a couple of times actually there's yeah. a scene on the beach yeah. and there's a group of soldiers mm. singing it's a hymn by Hubert Parry but my music was already going and somehow it has to negotiate mm. the hymn and then continue later. And there's another scene in the church during a wedding and there's the organ playing away. But also my this, the rest mm. of the score 
it's kind of merging with the organ and, and it's, it, they're, they're nice they're nice things to try to explore for me do you orchestrate yourself um, I usually share the orchestration with somebody else so I take half the cues and I give half the cues just for as a matter of time I used to do everything myself and then working on bigger movies I, I have to get help at the end of the process but the way I work like a lot of people now uh, I mock up what the piece of music is with synthesizers and samplers yes. and so I put ev every single note in and I know a lot of composers that work that way so it's a matter then of translating the mock-up into notation mm -hmm. which is quite, quite fast and, and straightforward mm -hmm. um. Do you get any inspiration from contemporary music, for example, some composers focus exclusively on, or very strongly on, on composing timbre itself, mm -hmm. like Takemitsu or, or Ligeti? Or, um, I, th I suppose that most of my uh, background is, uh, I'd say, classic. Cl classical mm -hmm. in the sense of uh, um, Western concert art music uh, so a lot of uh, the, the language that is in my hands even when I play the piano if I improvise or in my head when I write comes from that tradition um, but at the same time every film comes with its own requirements and um, often I find myself having to work with people that are not uh, Uh, brought up in a Western tradition and don't read music, for example. So I have to find ways to work with uh, when I work with Indian musicians or uh, Middle Eastern musicians, trying to find ways to collaborate with people that have a completely different idea about music um, and still feel that the music is mine. It's not. It's not. Uh, um, I'm thinking of. I don't know if. You you have done um, um, proper film in, in the horror genre or mm, I have science actually. fiction <laughs> yes I, I have done a proper horror movie What, did you use extended techniques uh, yes, tension which never gets yes. resolved a lot of a lot of things written with scribbles on the stuff and people going sliding up, up and down and playing the irrational things uh, yes of, of uh, There's a film called uh, um, Shrooms, in fact, that I, I did together with the director of my very first two movies, the Irish director, um, Paddy Branagh, um, he, who brought me in to write this horror score. So it was, it was actually quite funny. Um, and I had, a, I had a very strange situation at some point, and it, uh, it overlapped briefly with my work on Atonement. I was working on the two films at the same time. And the music couldn't be more different. Um, and and by mistake, once I sent a piece of music that was uh, for the horror movie, I sent it to Joe uh, while I was working on the tournament. And um, the, the a very very British understatement came back saying, "I don't I don't think this is for me." <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> Um, yes. I wonder. Sometimes I observe. You may, you know, there's the academic world where I find myself in now, uh, and the, what you do. Uh, which has completely different questions. Do you, do you see uh, connections or um, uh, useful, uh, for example, I, I, I suppose you don't read these uh, strange books or? I, uh, occasionally I do. I'm, uh, right, right now I'm, I'm reading a very interesting book on 20th century music written by Alex Ross. And, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Uh, occasionally I read uh, um, dissertations that some students uh, do on my music and there uh, was some years ago 
um, a, a young uh, um, musicologist composer who wrote some 470 odd pages uh, on, on film music and especially about atonement uh, so I I'm, I'm aware of what's going on and I, I personally I think that there is uh, uh, some disconnection between what I do that is mainly a practical thing and it, 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 and the, the way I solve problems and the way I write music is extremely practical um, and ana analyzing music that can be very intellectual there is obviously some some point where it, it becomes interesting and, and I find myself sometimes talking about music in, in, in a quite an analytical way about what I've done and trying to find maybe the rationale or, or the justification for what I do. But I think what is really interesting is that most of the rationalizing and the anal analyzing comes after the event. So I'm always slightly suspicious about the analysis because uh, even when I analyze what I myself have done, if I'm really, really honest, I know that at the time, I didn't have the time to analyze when I did it. I did it because I was shooting from the hip and hope, hoping to find the target in some way. Um, that doesn't mean that what a musicologist might be able to find in my music is not true. I just doubt that it is the reason why I did it, yes? Uh, I think that there could be a lot of um, it really interesting uh, academic work done on what it means to write in a practical way. What, it, what does instinct mean? Where does it come from? How, how do you form your instinct? Where, what is attached to? And that could be, I, I would find that academic were very interesting. So, uh, concretely, uh, where did you form your instinct? It's like with cooking, you know, you have to try out things and uh, through doing it again and again, you get the twist and but the pasta answered, is perfect. You've uh, answered the question. Oh, okay. it is, well, it, I, I think you're absolutely right. It is like cooking and you have to try it and you get a sense for how much salt and you need to use and uh, uh, you know just go with the oil like that it, 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 you don't measure the oil and think okay well that that's what the recipe says and so I uh, well I'm that kind of cook anyway. I just go like this and uh, if it works that's great and if it doesn't work I'll remember next time that didn't work um, and also I think um, there is a there is a wonderful part of the instinct that comes from the music you've heard and how you've grown up with music and if you just trust it it's a matter of trust and uh, um, I know a lot of musicians find it very very difficult to improvise mm. if they don't have something uh, in front of them they can't play anything um, and maybe because I've never been very good at reading I was always happier to improvise and find patterns on the keyboard and things and uh, so there is a I know that there is a, a almost like a tap you open the tap and out comes the music mm -hmm. it, it's uh, it's there all the time I don't know where but I know it's there and it's, I just need to put my hand on the piano and things start coming out and I think that is some instinct that one learns to trust um, and, I, and I think the what happens after you've done a few movies or after you've written some music you discover um, how to grab something that is that might be very small maybe it's a couple of chords and then build something around it that, that's where maybe technique experimentation and more rational process come in and uh, you decide what to do with something that is almost uh, appeared mm. like a mushroom out of nothing but you, 
you find out how to cook that mushroom and make it taste right. What I sometimes notice when I listen to Mala or Beethoven, doesn't matter which, there are certain moments where I suddenly think, oh, my, my, my mind drifts off into something and that could be the beginning of something new then, mm -hmm. if, if you pursue that. Uh, mm. I don't know how, how uh, I see there's Beethoven here on your piano. Uh, are you picking up certain chord sequences? I'm right? <laughs> Well, or, I don't know. It, it might be happening without me knowing. Uh -huh. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn. Oh, that's the late, just playing. The late sonatas, yeah, oh. mm -hmm. uh, uh, which um, I've been I've been living with for the last forty years or so. And it's they're mm. they're my my point of reference, right? It's almost it's almost ridiculous to have uh, you know uh, that kind of reference, but um, I ke I keep finding. Um, really interesting things mm. uh, that that I I'm understanding. I feel I understand more and more because I'm trying to write music, and I see what kind of problem Beethoven might have had and how he might solve it. Um, but uh, no, I, I play classical music on the piano all the time because I like it because uh, um, because I'm happy when I do that. But I also I know that. When I put my hands on the keyboard, there is a certain um, tank mm. of of musical ideas mm. that comes right out again. Do you, do you compose actually on the piano or with the keyboard? Uh, I I compose at the keyboard. Yeah. Sometimes I just have a piano sound, and I have a computer recording what I do. And uh, sometimes it's very funny. I, I, I have no time and the, the editor is ringing me up and this has happened a number of times and they say we have a screening in two hours and we haven't got anything for that scene can you do something and I just literally put the, the computer to record and I improvise for two minutes and then I sent it and that becomes the main thing for the film and then a few months later I got to orchestrate it for a big orchestra but that was two minutes of me improvising something and uh, it happens to be put together with the images and something new comes out and uh, that's it. Would it be too much to ask you to imagine a situation in a film? I can, we can come up with something. Uh, I can try it. And I, I can't guarantee that it works. Yeah. But well, uh, then we'll cut it off. Yeah, right. Uh, what can you think of? Um, um, Two lovers realize uh, their love is not going anywhere, and uh, there's still some kind of attraction, but it's drifting apart. It's clear, and but they they don't know it quite themselves yet, but right. it's already there. Ah, it's it's complicated. complicated. Yes, it's complicated. I don't know. Okay, okay so let's try.
say, no, it's the, all wrong. <laughs> the, that's the beauty of instrumental music. It's quite abstract, so you can, if you combine it with mm -hmm. images, it can go this way or that way. Yeah. Um, it's, all right, uh, if you don't mind, we could yeah, sure. go up there yeah, and yeah. Uh, just to get an impression uh, that sure. you also work with electronics. Yeah. That would be useful. Okay. Um, great.